Hi everyone, I'm Richika Bidra and on today's episode of Hashtag No Filter, we are talking about Islamophobia and where the issue currently stands in Canada. Stay tuned everybody. <music> Welcome back to everybody all across GT in Toronto. Thank you for tuning in to today's episode of Hashtag No Filter. I am Richika Bindra, and for all of you that are going to tweet us throughout the show, don't forget to do that at No Filter Rogers. We will be taking in live tweets um, throughout the segment. Uh, we're doing a little bit of an important episode today in light of the current events that have been happening in Canada, the cultural um, situation. I think a lot of Hashtag No Filter is about bringing in awareness and speaking to our millennials and working to build change. Today we're talking about Islamophobia, the current situation, um, where our millennials can contribute to shaping a better space for Canada, regardless of what your religion is, and understanding um, what has happened and where we can go from there. Uh, joining me today is Cassandra, our social media expert. Hello. Hey, everyone. So as she said, the entire episode is on Islamophobia. So we really want to hear from the viewers today. So if Islamophobia has affected you in any aspect of your life, send us a tweet at no Filter Rogers, and we'll be sure to read your tweet on air. Amazing. Joining me today as well is our millennial panelists. We have Ron and Nikta. Hello. Hi. Hello. Thank you guys for coming on. And I'm very excited to have two um, members of the community, two people that have lots of experience they can build, uh, both personal and in terms of understanding a little bit of why things are the way they are, understanding the culture and the background. We have Mr. Safwan Chaudhary. Hello. Thank you for Thank having you me. Thank you for coming on. And we have Mr. Muhammad Jaffer. How Thank are you, you guys? Me. So a lot to talk about. Uh, thank you guys for coming. I'm going to start a little bit by understanding um, the background of where you guys come, the nature of your personal and professional life, so our viewers can a little bit um, get a better understanding of where you're coming from. So if you want to go ahead and tell us a little bit. Sure. So um, I belong, uh, A, the first thing I always like to identify myself is a Canadian. Amazing. Okay. Um, I'm a Canadian Muslim, uh, and I take a lot of pride in being a Canadian. Um, and as a member of the Ahmadiyya Muslim Jamaat, we are extremely active in ensuring that Canadians uh, understand who their fellow Muslims are. We've, we're in the middle of a campaign right now called Understanding Islam, uh, nice. where we've actually, it's a national campaign from Newfoundland to British Columbia, but we've done other initiatives such as Meet a Muslim Family, where we invited people to come over uh, and visit a, their fellow Muslims and have maybe a lunch or dinner, um, or a Tim Hortons if you want to make it really Canadian. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but we've done other initiatives as well. For instance, we've done fast with Muslims. We're doing Ramadan. Mm -hmm. You can actually experience what Muslims go through for a full month. Uh, you know, we don't recommend that you fast the entire yeah. month. <laughs> but uh, give it a shot. It's not incumbent on you, yeah. but uh, certainly you can, you're welcome to come try it for a day. And we've also done other more um, serious toned campaigns such as Stop the Crisis with the emphasis on the word ISIS mm -hmm. to... Um, push back against the rise of radicalization mm -hmm. um, and a lot of those concerns, which are legitimate concerns mm -hmm. as well. So again, the nature of a lot of our work um, is both academic, but also ensuring that the everyday Canadian understands who Muslims are and what they believe. So you want to empower them with the knowledge so they can kind of Correct. go further. I think that's a really um, well said and an important thing that we need to work towards, especially if you want to shape the future of Canada. I think there's a lot of work that needs to be done. Uh, Mr. Jaffer, on your end, tell us a little bit. Yes, my name is Mohammed Jaffer. I grew up here since I was five. Nice. North America, New York and Toronto. Okay. Um, I went through the schooling system. I experienced everything, what everybody experiences when did my MBAs in, in New York. We do run camps for youth. We run a lot of things to help humanity. If you ask me who I am, I'm, I'm just another human being. Though I believe in one God, and if that means being a Muslim, that's what Islam is. Mm -hmm. I did run, um, I do run an investment firm for the last seven years. I worked for JP Morgan for 20 years. And in the end of the day, we're all similar. We just want to help each other. So we do help the poor, feed the homeless. So we want to teach about Islamophobia by actually showing kindness that we're all equal. I did grow up with us seeing a lot of racism, discrimination, yeah. bigotry, just like anyone who's brown or different experiences. But you have to look past that, and we've done that and survived. And I said to my friend, who we run these um, camps with, that the youth are going through so much peer pressure, so much suffering, we got to do something about it. So about 25, 30 years ago, we did. We started uh, camps, uh, weekend schools, everything, you name it. 
and it's thank God it's doing okay. I think it's the effort that um, that's yeah. commendable to see that there are people like you guys going out in your community, taking out the time in your busy lives to make this, you know, make it known to people, to Canadians all over. Your campaign is national, so you're working not just, you know, Toronto, not just Ontario. You're trying to get it um, communicated. And I think that's where the biggest change starts, by beginning to build a discussion about it. Mm -hmm. Nikta, I know you're as well Muslim. Have yeah. you ever experienced a little bit of um, sort of a backlash? Have you ever felt a little bit uncomfortable in your skin, in your personality, to be how you are? Personally, I'm a very confident person. I have no problem with who I am. I was growing up that I was like my raised that way. My parents have always told me, you know, be confident in who you are. As a child, you know, um, starting to wear my hijab, mm -hmm. I was a bit of iffy on that since obviously, you know, the first year that I was wearing it, it's you know changing my whole like the way that I'm perceived. You know? Absolutely. But um, the way that people take it, I mean, I'm downtown every day for university um, and I see all types of people. I see people who are embracing Islam and telling me that Islam is beautiful. But the other side, the other hand, I see people who are protesting against Islam and who are holding up signs that Islam should be banned from our country. So I see both. It's not pleasant seeing the negative side, but it's something that I have to see sometimes. Do you, you mentioned that when you kind of started to wear your hijab, there was a little bit of p how people are going to perceive you. Mm -hmm. What was the change you saw? Well, for me, uh, I actually switched schools, not for the purpose of my hijab, but just, you know, life happened that the year that I was going to wear the hijab, I switched schools. So the new people that I was going to meet at the other school, they didn't know that how I looked or how different I was uh, before not wearing the hijab. So that, in a way, was really good for me. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you know, just from my, the way I go out personally, the way I feel, um, it, it, you know, obviously it's going to be hot when I run around. Uh, I have to get used to that. Um, but did but, you feel like people perceived you a little bit different or they kind of were like, okay, you must be this type? Like, did they typecast you? People really didn't. Okay. Um, but I always kind of thought in the back of my mind, maybe they would be thinking of me differently, but really they weren't. Okay, so yeah. that's a nice positive change as well to yeah. see. If I were to ask you, does the word Islamophobia bother you? That there's this word phobia attached to it. Does, does that word on its own bother you? Or do you think, okay, there's a reason why it's being coined? Well, I think that it's twofold. It concerns me, mm -hmm. I would say, more than it bothers me. Um, and, and I think, again, what is a phobia? Phobia is a fear of something. Right. So when it's Islamophobia, I think, you know, there's this narrative out there that's such a vague term, nobody knows what it means. I don't think it can be any more clear. A phobia is a fear of something, and if Islam is in front of it, then it tells you who it's a fear of, and it's often misunderstanding. And I'll tell you where my concern is. Hold that thought. On the other side of the break, we're going to get your definition sure. of it, and as well with Mr. Muhammad Jaffer. Stay tuned, everybody. everybody, I'm Ruchika Bindra and you are watching Hashtag No Filter. Thank you for tweeting us, continue to do so. We will be taking your questions. Uh, before the break, we were chatting about the word Islamophobia. Yes, yeah, so as, as I had already explained earlier that, you know, th there's this also narrative that it doesn't exist, there's no such thing. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's right in the term, but also one thing that sadly that we witnessed just a short while ago was one of the most gruesome attack against Muslims in Canadian history. In Qu you're referring to the Quebec, Quebec City, City Mosque, Mosque shooting. Um, this was the largest attack on Muslims in Canadian history. Yep. Um, what particularly troubles me and concerns me is especially um, this growing narrative about how uh, Muslim women in particular should or shouldn't dress. Mm -hmm. um, if you think about it, Muslim women in particular are more visibly Muslim. Yes. Um, the average Muslim male walking down the street, you can't really tell whether they are. Absolutely. But it makes them more susceptible um, to a threat or an attack. Uh, just uh, a few months back, we saw an attack on a pregnant Muslim mother who was walking her children to school. Um, so, you know, as I mentioned, what does this term concern me the most or the actions behind it? It's particularly uh, Muslim women who uh, are more sus susceptible to an attack just because they're more visibly Muslim. Yep. Um, it's often, poli whether it's politicians or policy makers or men in general that are deciding what they should or shouldn't wear, what is acceptable, what isn't acceptable, whether they're forced 
and um, supp being suppressed by wearing a hijab or not. But very rarely do we ever hear a Muslim woman's side of it, her explaining, am I being forced to wear it or not? Is it a um, choice of my own? Precisely. And how um, difficult it may be in the environment. I mean, more and more Muslim women um, feel sometimes uncomfortable being out in the streets after uh, the sun sets and it's mm -hmm. a little bit darker but just because they know of some of these attacks that have taken place sadly in a city like Toronto. And it's sad because you know what we a lot of people think they came to Canada they came to this place that was supposed to have an open flow of communication you know we left um, countries that are more susceptible to war whether you know you take it from Pakistan or India or you could take any um, you know you could literally take even Dubai that that had so many issues people have moved thinking they could be in this open space and mm -hmm. and you're right I know very uh, actually quite a few uh, amount of women who are like after evening they are a little bit nervous you know mm -hmm. post seven eight and it's sad because you want to be able to go outside in, a, in the park and go for a jog if you want to go for a jog you know regardless if it's seven oh eight um mr jaffer what's your view with this word islamophobia well i think it's a term probably some politician put together or somebody because if you meet most people i'm not sure if they're phobic maybe yeah. they are because it's a it's a fear of the unknown right mm -hmm. and that's simple to solve education, get to know somebody, get to know a fellow Muslim. And if people have phobias, you just have to throw out some names. Oh, did you know Ice Cube's Muslim? Oh, wow, mm -hmm. I like him. Or Zayn Malik? Oh, he's Muslim? Oh, I like him. He's cool. Okay, he's cool, cool okay. now? Okay. Muhammad okay. Ali, yeah, yeah. So okay. association. Yeah. But the bigger problem is not the phobia. I think what Montreal wasn't a phobia. That was hate. Mm -hmm. That hate was crimes. intolerance. So that was different. intolerance. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is, that's what you call bigotry. It's people are intoler intolerant of uh, somebody else's view. Mm -hmm. And that's sad. Because Ron, it happens before. It's not something new. No. It's happened in history for thousands of years. When Moses came, the people hated him. And the, they hated their people. When Jesus came, they hated his people. Mm -hmm. And what happens now? The Muslims are here and they hate them. For what? Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. It's a sad situation, mm -hmm. but it happens. No, definitely. There's a lot of work, I think, that needs to be done. And I think yeah. you... I, I like to always emphasize education is, is so empowering. First. Regardless of what the topic in life is, the more you educate somebody, the more you empower the person in themselves to grow and change themselves. Because everybody exactly. can begin to change their outlook. And that's what we want to get to, a point where people are able to have an open communication and be able to um, understand each other and let people be in their space, right? I think that's important. Sure. And that's the basis of what being Canadian and being in Canada is. Ron, I know you work, um, you travel a lot. That's the nature of your business. Have you ever experienced that? Because I know in airports there is a lot of this concern and there's a lot of people on and off flights and stuff that I've seen that's, that's quite sad and disturbing. Um, do you ever feel like as somebody who's working in that industry you see it more or do you feel like things have gotten better? Well, personally with me, because I work in, I don't always get to see it because mm -hmm. I'm, first of all, I'm not Muslim or very much, you can't, I'm not visibly Muslim nor mm -hmm. that I am, I'm not Muslim, right? So I don't get that kind of discrimination. if. Do you, you see know, it with other people so along your journey? Not so much at the airports, I don't. And I know we hear a lot on the, in the media mm -hmm. and in the news that it does happen. For me, I just go through the back door and I'm in, so I don't get to see it. But I do get to fly to a lot of countries and see a lot of countries where um, if you're Muslim or if you look like um, you are a person of a color. Person, not so much of color, but if you, are, um, if you come from a Muslim background or if you're Arab or and then you get, you know, you'll get searched more or you get pulled Type aside. You, exactly. Certainly you see that a lot in the United States and mm -hmm. we see it in the news very often. I like to say that um, for the word Islamophobia, to me it makes no sense at all because if you look at the word Islam itself, it means peace. And then phobia, so fear of peace, mm -hmm. it makes no sense to me. Well, that's just my submission to God. Yeah. And mm -hmm. We're all doing that if, in, in our own ways. And exactly. Even if we're not, we're still brothers and sisters in yeah. creation, right? No, absolutely. And I think the problem with that is, and, and what you guys were saying, and what was very powerful is, it comes down to a lack of education and a mm -hmm. lack of knowledge. Uh, I grew up in the Middle East. I grew up in in Israel and close to conflict, and I've seen that divide between Muslims and Jews, and I grew up in it. And I can tell you that. Um, obviously there's a lot of misunderstanding between the two sides, a lot of miscommunication, lack of communication is probably a better, uh, a better uh, way of describing it. So I think it, it comes down to uh, being educated about each other and really finding a way to uh, better um, accepting each other. I mean we've lived through one holocaust and so why are we now um, coming to the point where we have to discriminate against a religion, against a group of people. Of course, um, you know, anti-Semitism, the hate of Jews, and the hatred towards Jews is probably one of the oldest, if not the oldest, sure. types of hates in, in, in existence. Uh, we've seen it once. We've seen where it has led. 
So why are we now doing Repeating it again? Repeating our own mistakes. Why are we, so have we not learned anything? And again, it comes back to education. No, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Really good point. Um, we are going to take a tweet right now. So we want to know what our viewers are saying. So Cassandra, what tweets are we getting in? OK, so we got a tweet in, and it says, is radicalization a result of Islamophobia, or is Islamophobia a result of the radical acts in the name of Islam? So I'd really like to hear our guest's opinion on this. Gentlemen? Happy to take that one Take on. the podium. <laughs> um, I mean, look, one thing that we cannot deny is the fact that, yes, there is radicalization. There's mm -hmm. extremist groups mm -hmm. that are hijacking the faith itself to further their own motives, their own vested interest, yep. whether it's political interest, whether it's territorial gain. Um, and, and who's at, at the end of it? Majority of their victims are Muslims yeah. um, who are often paying the price to some of these uh, terrorist organizations. So coming back to this individual about their tweet, I think, again, it goes right back to Ron's point, is education is, is, is absolutely key. Um, I'll give you a small little example. When we launched, the Ahmadiyya Muslim Jamaat launched a campaign called Stop the Crisis with emphasis on the word ISIS. ISIS. The, and we did it across Canadian universities. And we opened it up to all types of students to ask questions. And it really, like, so many students at Canadian universities walked away um, a saying that thank you for doing this because now I mean I'm more equipped to confront somebody who I think may be using the faith to right. malign Islam. Safwan, hold that thought. On the other side of the break, we're going to continue discussing this tweet. Stay tuned, everybody. Welcome back and thank you for watching Hashtag No Filter. We are talking a little bit about um, Islam, Islamophobia, and the situation that is currently taking place in Canada. Um, you can continue to tweet us. Cass will be taking in your tweets at No Filter Rogers. So please don't forget to tweet us throughout the show. On the other side, we were having a discussion. Tell me a little bit more about what you were saying. So, you know, um, and the tweet said, is Islamophobia um, to a fault, radicalization, yep. and vice versa? There have been individuals who have been radicalized yep. and joined an extremist organization and said, I did it because I constantly saw my faith being maligned. Yep. Um, That's actually one of the biggest reasons they say, yeah. Correct. So I think, I, I, and again, so it, 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 it is a sensitive um, topic. And this is where I say that the biggest um, solution to that is education. Um, the, you know, we have a website. It's very simple. It's called al-islam, which is the islam, dot org. It's international in scope. And it has some very simple questions answered. Um, and matter of fact, including sometimes people uh, are either cite verses that are taken out of context or, um, you know, you were going to talk about, uh, we were just discussing during the break about media yep. and the role that plays. That's huge. Frankly, would we have even known about ISIS as much if it wasn't for the media? No. So oftentimes media is the fuel that is um, powering some of these um, terrorist organizations and they actually take it as a gauge on their popularity yes. to see how much we're being talked about, how much yeah. social media is, is being discussed. We firmly believe, and especially as a Muslim, I believe that terrorism has no religion, mm -hmm. and no religion uh, teaches terrorism. Um, so oftentimes, uh, media, politicians, policymakers uh, have a big role to play on public perception. And, and, and naturally, that can influence people both negatively and positively. And I just want to piggyback onto what you were saying. I was reading an article today, and they were saying that within the last three, four years, 94% of terror attacks within the United States were done by non or were done by non-Muslims, right? So it it's not that ISIS and those organizations are the result necessarily of the terror attacks that we're seeing. But what the media and the way that the media does portray it, for example, if you see Syria and you see all the, uh, the effect that ISIS has on Syria, every time they talk about it, they're always putting in the word Muslim, right? right. And so whenever you see ISIS, you always see Muslim and extremist, and that's sort of where all that is coming from. Very good and I think it's not Very so much point. fear. Yeah, people fear ISIS, obviously, coming here to North America, Canada, the U.S., but when we see that word, we start to then associate and stigmatize uh, Muslims or whoever else. And, and, and we look at all the victims and all the pictures of everybody getting victimized. And, and rightfully so, as we should help people who are getting victimized. Uh, but that's what fuels. And you were saying uh, that the media fuels it. But what they're doing is fueling hate. And because when you're showing so much hate, 
you're then fueling it. You are helping uh, fuel it, and we've seen it constantly in the, in, in the media because they're saying, oh, and, and they're planting ideas into people's heads too. You'll see on CNN, you hear the word lone wolf attacks, right? Mm -hmm. They'll say, oh, ISIS is um, trying to encourage lone wolf attacks. By saying that, then they are encouraging it. They are putting it out there, and therefore you're putting out hate. Mm -hmm. And that's what it comes down to, I think. I have a really important question for you both. I was talking to um, a few people in, in the journalism industry when I work, and people that have actually gone out and done reports on you know, terror attacks and groups that have happened. And, and a lot of them have actually spoken to people that have been part of those camps that have then you know, become de-radicalized and just gone back into following Islam and you know, following a peaceful, normal life of it. And a lot of them say that their reasons are, well, I was taught that this verse means this. It means, uh, you know, quote, I'm doing it for a benefit. I'm sacrificing myself. You know, we should sacrifice ourselves. And a lot of people say that sometimes it's really old school kind of, I guess you could say, gurus or teachers that are misinterpreting it and teaching it to it's younger very people. Easy. So how do you, like, it's where so can simple. we understand look at, that? Look at Nazi Germany. Mm -hmm. They were a Christian, we don't say Christian Nazis, or we don't say Christian Hitler. No, we don't. Or the yeah. Protestant KKK, we yeah. don't do that. So you're right about that, but it's all brainwash. Mm -hmm. You can brainwash anyone to believe anything. I mean, you see that in British Columbia, you mm -hmm. see that, and you, you see that everywhere. You so if I pick up a book and misread it to you, and you yourself can't read it because maybe you're not that educated to read the language, you can, you're taking my interpretation. You got it. It's, it's nothing to do with yeah. Islam. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nothing it, to do with it, it. And it doesn't necessarily apply to religious text. Mm -hmm. Perfect example that Ron gave, there are people in Israel on the Palestinian side or the Israeli side also brainwashing and creating fear of yeah. one another, right? You can eat those, you know, um, Israelis have been and, and Palestinians have been living on that land for thousands of years. Yeah. Um, and, and they've occupied that land and they've lived together. But oftentimes what ends up happening is you start to cre create the boogeyman of one another. Um, just tipping back to the media point, what it ends up doing is when you're constantly showing this image of frightening, scary-looking Muslims yep. that are coming to take over your country. It's not the case. Nobody's coming. You know, we, we want to be contributing members to Canada. We don't want to take over Canada. No one's here to, yeah, that you word know, in itself um, changes the game. It, it, Let me absolutely. tell you, we get scared too. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I was on a plane on September 11th, actually, but I was in the United Flight going to Brazil. So I had no clue what was happening. Right, because you were on air at that And point. I was living in New York at the time, and my wife was discriminated against. When I landed, when I saw it, I mean, I cried. I mean, it was the worst thing that happened in human history. But at the same time, I'm coming back on a flight, I felt uh, this discrimination. They asked me to get up, get out, and they wanted to see who I was. And then I went back. And this is where I told you I got scared, too, because I didn't expect another Muslim name in Brazil coming no. back. They mentioned two of us, two Muslims. I got scared. I said, hey, wait, is another Muslim on plane? Yeah. Here? But the guy is, you know, if you know Brazil, there's so many Lebanese. Um, I mean, the yeah. guy's name is Malufi. That's such a common name. Yeah. So I said, it's, I was almost hit with the same negative media, you know, attention. And I Especially realized... Especially during that time, it yes. must have been at a heightened level. But at the same sure. time, I saw beautiful people. I mean, my work told me, we'll send someone in front of your house to watch your wife and your kids. And she was pregnant. Just so you feel And like these that. are other human beings who cared for each other. Mm -hmm. I mean, so we have good people and we have a lot of negative things that we need to clean up. No, absolutely. And I think on the other side of the break, we want, I want to talk a little bit about that. And there's a very specific incident which reminds me a little bit of this case, which I will mention, between um, a famous border, which borders in India, between India and Pakistan. And you have the army soldiers protecting one side and the army soldiers protecting Pakistan's side. And a discussion that I had with them. And, and you know, I walked away kind of just like, oh, my God, we have so much work to do as an, as an entire world, yes. like on so many levels. So stay tuned, everybody. On the other side of the break, we're going to talk a little bit more about this. Um, really quickly, though, we are going to see what our tweet is from Cassandra. Okay, so we got a tweet in, and it says, how does Islamophobia differ between countries? So we've been talking a lot about how it's affecting Canadians, but when you're going to different countries, is it the same? Is it worse in other countries? Hmm. Anyone wants to take that in the minute before well, break? I've lived in a lot of countries. Okay. It's not, Islamophobia in Canada is not just Islamophobia, it's also you have the xenophobia, you have all these other phobias. Like, for example, when I was young, I was called a Paki because my parents, grandparents are from India. Okay. You go to New York, they say, what's a Paki? Yeah. You have no idea. These words, But yeah. there is racism, discrimination, okay. bigotry everywhere. Okay. It's just... It's, how you present it. It's how hate. you present it. Okay, we'll pick that up on the other side of the break. Stay tuned, everybody.
Welcome back, everybody. Thank you for watching today's episode of Hashtag No Filter. A lot to talk about, so let's get right back where we were. We were speaking about the tweet before you gave your opinion. On your viewpoint as well, do you think it varies by country? Do you think it's something that's an issue in general? Well, I mean, look, let's look at where we are. Let's yeah. start here. Let's yep. start right at home in Canada. Um, I think we're an exception in the world. Mm -hmm. I, I firmly believe, especially as a Muslim, there's no place like Canada. Mm -hmm. uh, a matter of fact, I'll even go as far as saying that the, a lot of what Canada does is more in line with Muslim teachings mm -hmm. um, of welfare, of reaching out to refugees. I mean, we set a global example for the world to see when we welcomed all those Syrian yeah. refugees, while the country just south of us had a huge issue. far more resources and said, no chance. Yep. Matter of fact, let's just ban them all together. Yep. Um, you know, not just that, but I mean, let's use another example in Canada. Quebec City wasn't the first time we saw a mosque being attacked. Mm -hmm. In Cold Lake, Alberta, a mosque was terribly vandalized. But you know who were the first people on the scene? Were neighboring Canadians who showed up with paintbrushes and paint um, and said, Muslims, step aside. We're going to clean this place up and you will not go in until it's ready for your worship. Um, mm -hmm. And they left flowers and cards, and, and that community actually came closer together. Um, so, in, And again, these stories often are, you have to say, only in Canada. Mm -hmm. um, so, you, no, I think it, there, it's, there's certainly exceptions, and Canada's one of them. Does it bother you that, when we take it back to the media light, that a story like that is not shown? We, we would focus on the vandalism done on the mosque, and that's the breaking news for that moment. We are not going to show how not everyone is fearful of Muslims. Not everybody has this phobia. Mm -hmm. We do come out as a community. We want to help each other. Does that bother you that, that the perception is always one-sided? Because I know um, as someone who was following, especially the Quebec City case, it, it kind of unfolded in a very interesting way. It went from two people to one. Mm -hmm. Then it went from, oh, he was just mentally disturbed. He wasn't all there. Right? It, it went into a perception of it was just an individual that was mentally disturbed. This we cannot sta state this Shop as hate crime. The same thing. Oh, they say he wanted a parking spot. That's mm -hmm. why he killed three kids. Yeah, mm -hmm. and come on. Something that happens in media that I've noticed: if you're Muslim, you're a terrorist. If you're any other religion, you have a mental illness. So thank God, Muslims, we don't have mental illness. And that's in, mm -hmm. that's I mean. in the West. <laughs> that's in North America. But if you go, for example, in Norway where you had the guy who came and shot all these people and yep. has his manifesto against Islam and women. Yep. Actually, they, they did something amazing in Norway. They did a, a circle, a ring of peace around a synagogue, around a church, and the Muslims started it. Yep. And it was all over the news. Guess who learned from it? The synagogue in Richmond Hill mm -hmm. did it around the Jeffrey Center. I have Center. heard about that, which yeah. I, I loved. It's beautiful. You know I thought that was really cool. It, religion is not meant to divide people. No. Religion right. is there to unite people. Exactly. And we have to stand united against the hatred and, and the bigotry, exactly. like you were saying. And it comes down to um, education and showing to the world that we're not scared of, of all of these isms and all of these phobias. We're not scared. We're going to go out there and we're going to do these things, like the circle, and, and we're going to show love to each other and to humanity, and, and that's what we have to build on, and not the hate that we're seeing. We have to do it. Yep. See, you can't wait for someone to do it. We went to Mother's Day, gave out flowers, and we give with the teaching of the Prophet that heaven is at the feet of your mother. Mm -hmm. Because there's a lot of bashing of Prophet mm -hmm. Muhammad. So when we did that, a Jewish lady came to me and said, this flower is for me? He says, yes, happy Mother's Day. And she read it, and she says, your Prophet taught this? She says, you guys, I'm Israeli, she said, I'm Jewish, similar to you, but you guys have it right. And thank you for doing this. So we need to do more things like that. We need to educate and empower, and in different yes, ways. And experience. that was such a beautifully genuine way to do it, yes. right? Short, concise, but hit the nail. And we were yeah. talking, I'm sorry to yeah. step yeah. in, but Mohammed, you and I were talking earlier in the green room before the show, and we were saying how close a lot of the religions exactly. are. How there's one God, and then everybody is so divided on, on fake morals and principles that often are not even there. Even the, the prophets are the same. So, Moses, Jesus, Muhammad, Noah, David, Solomon, we're all similar. And so the, 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 it's supposed to unite people, and what it's doing is somehow people found a way to hate against each other and use that to divide each other. But there's something good happening. Have you heard of Rumi, of course, right? Yes. The poet. 60,000 poems, the number one poet in the United States and North America. <sighs> Crazy. You know what he's doing? It's actually Islamic poetry. Mm -hmm. He's uh, explaining the Quran and his love of God. And people in love a simple him. way because he's yes. got that attention. He's and got that no leadership. No one even thinks that his name is Jalaluddin Muhammad yeah. Rumi, you know? Yeah. But they say, yeah, I love it. I mean, uh, this, his singers are playing their, his, his poetry before their, their concerts. Coldplay, for example, mm -hmm. plays Rumi. 
That's Islamic poetry before a, con a concert. Which Why? I think is a nice, genuine way that you know you can, you have a crowd that's already at, at your willingness to listen yes. in a world where there's so much noise. And if you can do that in whatever way, I think that's a really good start. And, and I love that. we have to that. break the fear of the unknown. Mm -hmm. Because once they realize, oh, this is Islamic poetry, oh, this is Islam, are you believing the same thing I believe? No, oh, we're all brothers. Which, actually, Sisters. I kind of wanted to draw a point on. I liked how you introduced yourself. You said, I want to start by saying I'm Canadian. I think it, it, we need to start this thing by saying, I'm a human. I'm Canadian, exactly. right? Um, and I've seen in my entire life in journalism, people come up to me, oh, OK, so you were from Dubai, so are you Arabic? What does that mean? OK, so <laughs> are you Pakistani? What does that mean? I'm from Adam and Eve. Are you Indian? <laughs> what does that mean? Yeah. So are you Hindu? So are you, what are you? So I said, why did, like, I said, I'm neither. I'm Sikh, but I said, that should not matter. Your discussion right. with me should be on me for the values as a human that I can bring to you. Sure. My religion and my way to get to God is the only difference. I may read it in a different way that you read it, but ultimately, every single book that you pick up today, any exactly. single religious scripture, at the end, attains the same thing. It takes people to God. Mm -hmm. How do you reach God? How do you reach peace? Your own inner peace. A lot right. of it is self-peace, you know? People say, oh, do you go to yoga? I say, no, I read. Yeah. That's my way of peace. Well, matter of fact, a lot of what you're saying is literally the teaching of Islam. Mm -hmm. um, and this is what we're taught. You know, I'll, I'll give you a great example. There, during the time of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, some of his companions got into an argument with the, his Jewish friend that was Moses greater or was Prophet Muhammad greater. And they brought the, this entire incident to Prophet Muhammad. And he said, don't say that I'm greater than him or he's greater than me. You know, this is going to hurt the feelings of another person. This is, is not a discussion that, that is needed. And exactly what you said, why does it matter um, what, where you come from? But, you know, and, and again, going back to scripture as well, in the Quran we're taught, and this is how much reverence Islam gives to saving life, that if you kill one person, it's as if you've killed all of humanity. If you save one life, it's as if you've saved all of mankind. And you know what? That's written in almost every scripture, sure. but no, we don't draw attention to these beautiful parts of it, right? And right. even it says that we've created you male and female, tribes and nations, so you could recognize each other, yeah. know each other. I have, yeah. I'm going to hate you because you're a woman, misogyny or something. No, of course, I love you because you're my fellow human being. That's so Absolutely. interesting. That's almost the nature of human beings, to be superior to somebody. And so when you hear somebody say, well, what are you? Are you this? Are you Muslim? Are you Jewish? Are you who are you? That's because somebody always wants to be superior. It's an inferiority to, complex. Exactly. Yeah. And that's the way human nature is. Sure. And, uh, it, it, you know, people are not born with hatred inside. It's yeah. something they are groomed for. It's something they learn. Uh, in you the hit the nail. And, like, you know, kids on the playground, you're not going to pick who you're going to play with when you're four, four five, six. You're going to play with everybody. Mm -hmm. But we need to reteach them. Correct. So we have to be more like kids and be open. Before we go to break, you know, my grandma always says there's no bad nations, there's just bad people who, who ruin it for a lot of people. Absolutely. On the answer of the break, we're going to talk a little bit more about this. Stay tuned, everybody. I'm Richika Bender on Hashtag No Filter. Everybody. Welcome back to Hashtag No Filter. We were talking a little bit about the current state of Islam in Canada. We will talk a little bit about what you can as well do, I think, um, as a Canadian citizen to make a difference a little bit after on the other side of the break. We are going to start by taking a tweet. Uh, thank you guys for all the tweets coming in. Cassandra, go ahead. Okay, so we got a tweet from Lindsay, and it says, how can the media take steps towards breaking the stereotypes and Islamophobia? So I want to know, not just the media, us as a community or even us as individuals, what can we do to break these stereotypes? Yeah, I, well, I, I think obviously we've already discussed it, how yeah. important the role of media is, but I just don't think enough time is spent on good journalism, on following some of the more positive stories, right? Like, we don't pick it up. While we know about the fact that, you know, some people may know that this Cold Lake mosque incident happened, um, we don't know who, like, how that community came together. Mm -hmm. um, this attack that took place on, uh, in Quebec City, mm -hmm. a lot of these uh, people who were gunned down why not learn about their lives? And you mm -hmm. figure out very quickly how they were contributing, giving members of Canadian society. Um, and more importantly, discussions like these mm -hmm. that help break barriers, um, break down walls, and help build bridges. So I think certainly media, I think in Canada, is definitely much better than maybe down south. Yeah. Um, and, and I think every Canadian is pretty thankful for that. But yes, I think there, is, there could be more quality journalism that's focused on um, more positive stories, 
But then again, I will say with a disclaimer, I realize that media, when it bleeds, it leads. Yeah. Yeah. So naturally, it's easier to sell violence. Exactly. Yeah. And, and it draws an attention, mm -hmm. right? If I'm a young millennial and I don't watch, let's say, the National at 10 every day or I don't watch the, you know, the news every hour at 10 o'clock, if I pass by and I see the breaking news is, OK, you know, uh, attack on this, OK, terrorist attack. Muslim man identified as. So what am I going to walk away in that six seconds that I only read that caption? Yeah. Okay, another terror attack must be a Muslim. That's it. It's now ingrained in so our they minds stop because saying Muslim. more because more they should um, just say this a terror Montreal. attack has occurred or this guy from Montreal a victim. You know, we yeah. have a case. We have somebody who's done it. We have a terrorist because that's what you are, regardless of your religion. If you're causing terror, you are a terrorist. That's the bottom line of it. Yeah. Do you know what the media feeds out? what we react to the most. If we see something positive on the media and on, like on the TV, we're just gonna be like, oh, that's cute, and then we walk away. And if we see something negative, like someone did this terrorist attack, we're gonna be like, oh, who, what, where, let's talk about it, let's do well, this. People oh. have the power. You know, the media likes when you watch and you react. If we want and demand something and push for it, mm -hmm. we can get it. Yeah. If we say we don't want to watch these types of segments or this type of talk, we want to hear positive talk, people will change. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, um, Mohammed. To go back to what you were saying, I don't think that in, in Canada it's one thing, but I think in, in, in a country like the U.S., where the majority, <coughs> bless you, where the majority of people um, are so scared of Islam, where there's so much fear being put out by the media, these same people go back to the media to feed that. They yeah. they want more. I don't think. I think this going to depends what state you're in. It's not sure. just country. No. New York is a different world. And, and you're 100 percent yeah. right. But I think there you're has right, to though. be a point where people unite together as a, a, as yeah. people, very simply, and make that push. Yeah. But I think until the media realizes that for themselves and has some kind of real, realization that um, they are damaging the community, they are really causing. Um, uh, uh, some kind of damage to the Muslim or whatever community. It has to trickle down from the top. I met Trump at my last job. He didn't discriminate against me because I'm Muslim. But you can see that it helped him get the votes in the middle of the state, the country, right? And you can see the behavior when people react to him when he says something negative like a ban on Muslims, which is unfortunate because it's just like the media. They want viewership. They want to say things to encourage people to watch. So let them say, oh, there's a crazy Muslim running on the streets. Everybody's scared. And they're going to see who is it. Oh, that's not a Muslim. Yeah. That's some crazy guy. You know, stuff like that. We need, to, we need to push for change. We need to ask for it. We need to get into jobs like you and push for that. <laughs> and wherever we are. Like in my last job, I was, again, I told you on September 11th, my clients were visited by my management. And one of my clients in Mexico was asked, what do you think of Muslims? He says, I hate them. They killed all these people. But I only know one Muslim named Muhammad. He's a nice guy. So uh, maybe I'm wrong. See, uh, this is where we as Muslims have to make an impact, but also you and others who are, know each other say, look, I know a Muslim, he's a good guy, or she's a good girl. We need to understand that we're all brothers and sisters and human beings, you know? We cannot segmentize and discuss. That guy is, you know, a fanatic. He makes his wife wear a scarf. So what about Mary, mother of Jesus? We didn't force her. It's, up, it's her prerogative. She wants to be conservative, that's up to her. If she doesn't want to, that's up to her. So we need the media to focus on the people and talk to them. They should come and talk to you yeah. and say, are you being oppressed? No, not at all. Well, at the end of this the day, we don't, we don't work, but I, I mean, and I 100% agree with what you're saying, but I just want to say that the media won't do that because like we said, if it bleeds, it leads. So it, it's very clear that as people, we shouldn't wait for somebody else to make a change we and we shouldn't wait for the media. And you know what I'm going to say? We have to start making that change. Of course. And it has to start with, with us, with our families and our homes. Yeah. And then that will eventually lead to the media. And I think we have to be cognizant that every religious group or every community it has their own challenges, has things that they're facing. Because as you said, when you're in a world where people are trying to reach the same path but through different channels, there's going to be a rat race, there's going to be a competition, my religion, you're, there, it's natural. As humans, our DNA is to compare and contrast. We, we, you know, we fight for basic jobs day to day lives when we go with our resumes. In our head, we've become this way that everything needs to be grouped and classified. And but that's we're our being problem. brainwashed. Yeah. It's not the radicals, exactly. it's we. We've and become we need to in that way that. where we need to say, okay, but I'm this way. Why? Why can't it just be, yeah. I'm a human, I'm living my life, these are my principles. Mm -hmm. I choose it to go via the you know, way of Islam, via Judaism, via Christianity. Why is it something that we have to say, but you're better than me, right? Why are we constantly in this competition? And I think that's very, very um, important. Like, you know, you were talking about 
people always ask you, oh my God, are you scared? Is that why you have to keep it? It's like Sikh men. It's like, oh my God, do you have to keep your turban? Is your dad mad at you? Is there like a big reason for it? And my fiance keeps his turban on. He says, no, I, I like it. I like the reason behind it. I like it. It's my identity. No one is forcing me. So I find it's, it's interesting that we see every religion has so many complex sure. nuances that we get labeled for. Sure. And as you guys said, if we work on breaking those labels, we can probably just, yeah. yeah, we can work on understanding each other for who we are, right? On the other side of the break, we're going to talk about what you can do in the community to help our current Canadian situation. Stay tuned, everybody. Everybody, we're on our last segment of Hashtag No Filter. A lot that we've been speaking about. I really appreciate both of you guys coming here today. This episode would not have been possible without you, so I want to start by saying a huge, huge thank you. Uh, quick question. As we're talking about differences, we're talking about education, you know, we've come to realize the role of the media, the work we as normal, everyday humans and Canadians can do. Is it challenging when there's competition between different Muslim groups in itself as well? Different forms of Islam? Well, I wouldn't call it competition. Okay. Um, I, I don't think any one of us is competing with one another, but but I think, of course, there is different schools of thought, and mm -hmm. sometimes somebody um, may come at the same faith in a diff from a different uh, point of view. Um, but again, uh, there's no doubt that there is uh, sectarianism, especially mm -hmm. as a problem in the Middle East. But we see that in, in a country like Canada, it's not a real problem uh, where one sect is trying to persecute another sect. Um, I'll just give you a small example of the Ahmadiyya Muslim Jamaat. Uh, the community I belong to is constitutionally persecuted in Pakistan, um, where okay. sometimes even the police is complacent. But many live in Canada uh, as refugees or come here mm -hmm. and, and, and live in safety. And especially when they meet other fellow Pakistani Muslims who may not be Ahmadi, they find more in common and of it course. helps break those barriers down. So I think Canada is a special place to especially break some of those barriers down as well. And then you need famous guys to make a difference. Yeah. Like, you know the guy who won the best actor is an Ahmadiyya, right? That's Maharshala right. Ali, yes. he won the best actor yes. of the year. You have to show yourself that we're no different than each other. Yeah, I'm from one school of thought, but in the end of the day, we're all brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. What is my school of thought? I love God, and I worship God, and I love humanity. That's what we all are, actually. Yeah, I, Even if we're an atheist, we're still searching for the truth. We have to break these stereotypes. Yep. We need to say, okay, I know I've met Muslims. I'm a follower of Ahlul Bayt. I'm a follower of the Prophet. I, you, you may not know that, but people on TV might. What is that? Well, I follow the Prophet. That's his sunnah. And I love his family. So I'm both a Shia Sunni. I'm a, they call sushi. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, okay. I was going to ask you because I, the reason I asked this question is when I went to university in yeah. Ottawa, you, I had a few numerous Muslim friends, like from my yeah. best friend's stall, and they would they would meet another one in the campus, and the question was, "So okay, you're Muslim, okay? So are you, you know, are you Sunni? Are you Shia? It was it's always so like the silly. second question, and my friends like, "Why? Why? Why are you matter? asking me? Like, mm -hmm. let me enjoy it." Like, okay, I'm Muslim. Like, we can connect on that. Can I join the association You know what's now? even better than that? See, if, you, if the Muslims even read their own book, yeah. it says, all you believe, all your Jews, all your Christians, yeah. all your saints, you believe in God in the last day, and you do good deeds, you'll be rewarded. You have nothing yeah. to worry about. So you're saying Jews, Christians go to heaven too? Yes. We're, the Quran yeah. says that. Yeah. God says yeah. that. But we have to do good. We yeah. have to be good people. No, it's a really good point. Do you know point. what? As a result of all of this stuff, I've gotten a lot of comments from different people saying, so, like, Nikta, shouldn't you, like, you know, wear a hat maybe with, like, a really big scarf since it's, like, winter as well to, like, cover okay. your scarf and kind of, like, blend in with the crowd. So change your identity. Change yourself. And I'm yeah. like, that's exactly what the society wants me to do. They want me to change myself. They want me to feel insecure about what I do. And I'm not going to let that happen. I'm going to stay the way I am. And I'm going to let media change itself, not myself or other people in this and religion. And, you know, not just the media. I think something that's really important is that we've been seeing this issue with Islam specifically we can take now because it's in the light, but with other religions, with the case of, um, you know, the whole Jewish situation that happened too, is the information that's being passed on from generations, you know? When I was at the border of Indian Pakistan talking to the soldier, he was this older man. I said, so why are you fighting? Why are you protecting this land? You're Hindu. What's the big deal? He said, no, no, it's in our book. My grandfather's grandfather's grandfather, it's mm. in our book. I turned to the guy, the Pakistan guy, I said, okay, sir, why are you here? 
what is this? Why do you have to protect your land? Let him. No, 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 no. Because I'm Muslim and it's in my Quran and I have to fight for my land. And I walked away standing there and I'm like, huh. And it's been taught to me and it's been said to me. And, you know, we've been following it for years to years to years. So a lot of it goes down to us changing it so that our future generations don't have to go through this, right? You don't have kids in school after 9-11. My friend who's a Muslim, her sister, I had to pick her up because she said they're scared because, you know, kids at that age already knew within a week that if you're Muslim, be scared of them. And I look at her and I'm My like, why are you crying? In the yeah. grocery store on 9-11. And she was scared and she was pregnant. It takes so, minutes, yeah. right? So well, this is a generational good. change. This is not something now. This has been growing over time. Yeah. Well, you know what, what particularly is troubling is, you know, just uh, the previous United States President Barack Obama, he called, he, he called, he chose to call it radical extremist or violent extremist, where Trump calls it Islamic extremist. Yes. Uh, Very good point. That, again, opens up a door where, again, those young minds yep. are going, yeah, it's pretty easy to interpret what exactly. that means. Exactly. So yeah, those people in, and power. matter of fact, especially not just people in power, but politicians in general will often put in a wedge. Especially, you know, you talked about sectarianism. Mm -hmm. The real problem with sectarianism is actually politics, mm -hmm. not the yes. people. That's created. Right. If really you, quickly, what is one thing we can do to change in the Canadian community? We have thirty seconds to our show wrap. Well, you know, I would w like to welcome anybody watching, and, and we actually saw an mm -hmm. example of that. Um, you know, just in Vaughan, where the headquarter of the Ahmadi Muslim Jamaat is, we have this big mosque called Battle Islam. And there's somebody who lived across the street, saw it every single day for almost a decade, never came inside until we did a camp and put a sign inside that said, Everybody's invited, open house. And they came in. And said, so, welcome everybody and educate everybody, I think, exactly. is a good we way. We just want to tell Canadians all mosques are open. Come in anytime, you're always welcome. Amazing. And come see what Muslims do at a mosque. Perfect. Thank you guys so much. Take care, everybody. And I will see you next week on Hashtag No Filter. Oh, 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 oh,